Hey, guess what? You get to live like a god for a year. There's just one little catch. I'm Kevin Leeson. With a name like General Butt Naked, you'd expect he'd be a pretty fun guy to hang out with. You'd be wrong. I'm Joe Fulgham. There's gold in them thar poops! I'm Torin Atkinson. Oh, and this is Caustic Soda. <laughs> Human sacrifice. Dogs and cats. Living together. Mass hysteria. We'll only be talking about the human sacrifice today on this particular episode of Caustic Soda. Dogs and cats living together is a completely separate episode. Now, I'm sure after we're done recording this episode, we'll get lots of commentary about, oh, we missed out on this, we missed out on that. I think we want to be very clear about what kind of human sacrifice we're talking about. We're talking about the kind of sacrifice where there's a dude hanging over a naked body with cr- mm-hmm. a curved dagger. An obsidian blade. And then they pull out the heart. Uh, only I, those. Yeah. Just got, those very specific ways. I've got well, maybe a couple of variations. Human sacrifice is the act of killing one or more human beings as part of a religious ritual. Victims were typically ritually killed in a manner that was supposed to please or appease gods, spirits, or the deceased. So to sum up, it's basically killing somebody for no logical reason. <laughs> for some, I think or for, actually, for a crazy reason. Yeah, like you want something magical to happen. Like you yeah. want the season to be good. You want the crop right. to be plentiful. You want, you want uh, the devil to give you a rock band contract. <laughs> Precisely. Torin, is there something you need to tell us? No. <laughs> Cthulhu doesn't sign so, uh, deals. So, word origin for sacrifice is from Latin. Sacer, meaning sacred, and facer, to make. Or to perform. So, sacred performance. I've had some of the things I've done been called that. You sacrificed many a... Uh, bodily fluid. Phobia. Sacred things or priests. Hierophobia. Uh-huh. Religious ceremonies. Teleophobia. That sounds... I think it's teleophobia. Sounds no, that's the fear of long distance, I thought. <laughs> Pretty much every civilization in human history has performed human sacrifice in one way, shape, or form or another. I know mine has. So I'm not 100% why we felt a need to hack other people up. For godly powers. For magical because we purposes. Because no, we had no such thing as agriculture and irrigation, so we had to rely on Thor <laughs> to make that happen. Well, it's... And Thor demands blood. Just the, the horrible extension of remembering the hits and forgetting the misses. Remember when we accidentally killed that guy and then it rained and our crops worked really well? Maybe the gods like that. Let's try it again. Yeah. And then when they try it again and they actually take some slave that they can afford to kill and butcher him and then it rained again, that must be because of that. Right. And it only takes one or two times for it to work even though you try it a hundred, mm-hmm. for you to go, no, it works. We must have screwed up the ceremony the time before. Joe, are you times. saying that there's a problem with causation in ancient civilizations? Ancient. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the Aztecs then. Because they were lousy with the human sacrifice. They weren't the earliest, but they were definitely the most often. They had human sacrifices for each of their festivals for each of their months. Yeah, there was a festival every month. And they had an 18-month calendar. Yeah. There were sacrifices wow. 18 times a year. Minimum. Minimum of 18 That's times a year. That's not just counting the hobbyists. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the casual sacrificer. Uh, many of their sacrifices were dedicated to specific gods. The sacrifices to Zyptotec. I'm just going to pronounce it that way. It's yeah, probably more like Shipe <clears throat> Totec or something like that, but I don't know. Yeah, the Aztec gods' names are not easy to decipher so we'll just agree that we're going to butcher them and move on yeah exactly zyptotic involves a rite where the victim was flayed and the priest dressed in his skin until it rotted off him symbolizing the coming of spring that is crazy that's just that is crazy it's just a starters like it usually when you're in a society where they take human sacrifice really seriously mm-hmm. the priest is the guy you want to be because you know that you're not the one who's going to get sacrificed like, there's really nothing yeah. that can come along that will put you in front of that train, right? But when you got to wear the flayed skin of your victim until it physically rots off of your body. There's a lot of talk, though, about how uh, the people who would be the, the magic man, the priests, the real believers uh, in this kind of magic and religion in those times weren't exactly all there mentally. Yeah. That, uh, schizophrenia and similar mental states... Oh, yeah, these oracles, be, right? ...seem to be quite prevalent in shamanistic cultures and the shamans in them. Or so, guys who'd have seizures and whatever, they'd yeah. be touched by God and blah, blah, blah. So this priest might not have just been, you know, our the, the equivalent of our modern-day, you know, rich preacher, 
right? Who's just bilking everybody and taking all their money. He's he kind of the wacky witch doctor. Wacky witch doctor, true believer. And he full on believes that wearing that skin is going to make it rain. Now, can, you, can you imagine that being the priest, uh, Charles Manson or Ted Bundy type? And he's like, I'm going to wear his skin, right? And yeah, he, he's, like, he's the one who kind of pr- uh, starts that one. And then like three priests down the line, he's like, when did we start wearing these freaking skins? This sucks. <laughs> How can I get rid of the skin wearing? Your Ugh. grandfather wore dead slave skins. <laughs> you will wear dead slave skins when you're a priest. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh, living with the sins of your fathers right there. That's for sure. Uh, I think you mean the skins of your fathers. Uh, that wasn't even done on purpose, but that's awesome. So then uh, alternately, you would burn someone in honor of the god of fire. Of course, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, uh, the most popular were sacrifices for the sun, the supreme god, on a special day called Tezcatlipoca. Prisoners of war were sacrificed by the priests who tore out their hearts and offered them to the sun. So this is the kind of traditional, the one that we know about the most. Yeah, this is the Temple of Doom one, right? Yeah. This is the one that, the historical record, I mean, this is what you see, because they were those guys who actually painted things in color. Yeah. And you just see these paintings of pyramids awash in blood. and They also do mass volumes in these kinds of sacrifices. Like, there's a, some story that they had to consecrate a new pyramid or something like that. Yeah. So they, they, uh, they hacked up 80,000 slaves in, in over a four day period or something like that. You're thinking of the reconsecration of the Great Pyramid of Tenochtitlan. That's what I was thinking of. In 1487. Yeah. Although there were probably far fewer than 80,000. Uh, that's just one report. Well, it's the Aztecs report. Yeah, the Aztecs <laughs> say they cut up 80,000. Somebody pointed out they just did the math. They did like the Wilt Chamberlain math. Where Wilt you're like, Chamberlain math? Yeah, well, Wilt Chamberlain claims he slept with like 20,000 oh, women. Okay. But then you're like, oh, wait a minute. That means he has to sleep with a woman like every 10 minutes for like 30 years or something like this, <laughs> right? So uh, it's, it's somebody did the math and they realized that so they would have to sacrifice somebody like every 40 seconds or uh, something like a that. 14 sacrifices per minute during the four day uh consecration yeah so yeah. they didn't quite add up it sort of seemed a little bit a little bit of a stretch yeah. to suggest as that. comparison the auschwitz concentration camp working 24 hours a day with modern technology approach but did not equal this pace it executed about 19,200 a day at its peak it was probably in the tens of thousands that actually got killed well according to codex telleriano remenzi's you know, you guys all know that one, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I got it on my uh, on my bed right now. I'm reading it. Old Aztecs who talked with missionaries gave a much lower figure for the reconsecration, approximately four thousand victims in total. So quite a wide disparity. Yeah, disparity. Yeah. Although there were four tables arranged at the top so that the victims could be jettisoned down the sides of the temple. Yeah, you'd have to have a pretty good assembly line kind of procedure yeah. Yeah, to exactly. actually make the logistics of this work out, right? And like getting a heart out of a chest is not easy with an obsidian dagger, I would imagine. You maybe you got guys prepping it. Maybe you got guys like putting some incisions in, cracking some ribs, right? Yeah. Like maybe you got sort of a uh, sous chef sort of routine <laughs> yeah, sure. with a chest. Cr- he's like hitting it with a mallet, right? Yeah. So that you can just get in there and pull that heart out. See, now, how was where... your day today, Wanda Kukudli? <laughs> it's like my arms are so tired. <laughs> I've been bonking people on the assembly line all day long. <laughs> this is where technology really pays off. If yeah. you could build a robotic heart de-heartener, de-heartener. You, like, you could just absolutely increase yeah, the efficiency. You take the ritual out of the ritual sacrifice doing that, Joe. You take the ceremony out of it. Are the you saying robotic arms have no soul? No, it's I'll not, have you know that my soulometer goes off whenever it goes near. It, it it's not that they have no soul. It's they don't lift it to the sky and go. And oh, scream. that's that's just a glitch in the programming. We're <laughs> going to fix that in the next patch. <laughs> Two point oh. So uh, we were talking about the different kinds of gods and the different ceremonies because each god required a different kind of victim sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so young women were drowned for Zelonin. Children were sacrificed to Tlaloc. Nuahatl speaking prisoners to Huitzilopochtli, etc., etc. And uh, also on the special day, which we talked about, Tezcatlipoca, in addition to the sacrifices, uh, on that day, all the people practiced the rite of self-sacrifice by pricking blood from their ears or other parts of their bodies and observing a rigorous fast until midday. Yes, that's right. They wouldn't eat until noon. All right. It's pretty much my part of the course with yeah, me. Yeah, my stomach would be growling by noon. If I'm going to be killing a lot of people, I don't think I want to have a full stomach either. Well, here's, yeah, that's Good the point. other thing. Like, maybe nobody was hungry <gasps> after watching all the hearts being <gasps> rolled down the side of the pyramid for, you know, the four days Heart previous. Heart for dinner again. Yeah, it's like, ugh. 
I'm not hungry, honey. Well, That's yeah. how it got started. They're all like, everyone, hey, let's go eat breakfast. I'm not hungry. I kind of mm. watched all the sacrifices all day Start yesterday. Start getting those dry heaves when yeah. you see the third heart get raised up to the sky. <gasps> like, oh, I think. Oh, this I'm is glad a, I didn't eat. This is a, this, these are the gods telling us we should be fasting. They also had the Tox Cattle Festival. On the day of this festival, a youth was slain who, for an entire year previously, had been carefully instructed in the role of victim. Okay, this is awesome. He was previously selected from the best war captives of the year. He assumed the name and attributes of Tezcatlipoca himself, and during that year was treated like unto a god. If you're going to be the victim of ritual sacrifice. <laughs> if you're going to die in a year, exactly. If you're going to die, man, at least live like a rock star for the year previous, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are other ways you could have died back in that era. I mean, it, it, people were probably That's only living until sure. they were 20, 20, 30 years old anyway, right? Tezcatlipoca demands more wine! <laughs> Yeah. And virgins! <laughs> yeah, there were virgins involved. Wait a minute, if I remember this correctly, he actually had like a little mini harem, too. Well, he was mated to four beautiful maidens of high birth. Not necessarily virgins, but I don't, I'm not they sure what... They wouldn't be for high, long. I'm not sure what high, high birth. High birth. <laughs> Come on, baby, doing it with a god doesn't count. This is like getting together with a Catholic girl. No, you'll still be a virgin. I'm a god. <laughs> At last, the fatal day upon which he must be sacrificed arrived. When he reached the summit, he was received by the high priest who speedily made him one with the god whom he represented by tearing his heart out on the stone of sacrifice. So still the the same method. You know, they, they definitely liked the tearing the heart out. It was the favored method, yeah. You can even see how this kind of thing could evolve uh, socially in that they are, they're just killing regular people, and then probably after a while it's not working, they have drought, yeah. and they're like, well, what's going on? Maybe we're maybe they don't like that we're sacrificing slaves. We've got to sacrifice something more important. Well, we can't kill each other. Yeah. Well, let's take one slave, treat him like a god, and then when he's, he dies, then they'll think it's like a god and it'll be a bigger sacrifice. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. And they tried that. And it worked. Yeah. That one time, it must be because of that. Yeah. Let's keep doing and it. And then why the next month they kill a, like an infant and why the month after that they uh, burn some guy. And yeah, exactly. They just keep trying different methods until yeah. they find one that hits. And so then that, you've got an annual like list of traditions. That horrible, broken human ability to see patterns where there aren't patterns yeah, sometimes. Precisely. Exactly. In the sacrifice of the dancer of the Zalaquia, a female captive or slave danced a whole day until daybreak. Then the chiefs and victim danced the solemn death dance. Solemn the, death dance. Yeah, in the end, she was stripped to a nude condition, or as I would just say, stripped nude. <laughs> I guess. I've got a terrible nude condition. I'm actually kind of surprised that she wasn't nude in the first place. I mean, there was lots of nudity yeah, they, back they in that day. Much, it was, you know, kind of warm. Maybe they at dressed all her times. up. Oh like, yeah, it could be. They dressed into her up the, in uh, some sort of like into the robe. death dance yeah. uh, party dress. I feel a thicket song coming on here. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Yeah, the yeah. solemn death dance. Uh, the solemn death dance. Oh, you totally got to make it like poppy though, like trying to actually start a dance craze. You have to do com- the death dance. Well, you have to combine both the low death chanting with the poppy dance beat. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Yeah, but then you actually have a video where you actually do the solemn death dance, and I don't know what you do for that. But like, someone gets naked at the end, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and stabbed in the breast with an obsidian blade. Uh, right. Actually, and... a knife of flint was oh, plunged into her bosom, and uh, tearing out the still palpitating heart, offered it up to Chico Mecuhualt. Hmm. In this manner, the venerable goddess, weary with the labor of inducing a growth in the maize plant, was supposed to be revivified and refreshed. Oh, so it's good for corn. Yeah, there actually is at least one good thing about human sacrifice is that they make a good mulch. Yeah, excellent for planting. You can really taste the blood in this corn. Heart blood. Every Aztec warrior would have to provide at least one prisoner for sacrifice. All the male population was trained to be warriors, but only the few who succeeded in providing captives could become full-time members of the warrior elite. Those who could not would become workers. Accounts also state that several young warriors could unite to capture a single prisoner, which suggests that capturing prisoners for sacrifice was challenging. Wow, so that was actually your job. Yeah. You, you had to go out and find people to, to sacrifice. Be sacrificed, yeah. That it was like a full time occupation. Mm-hmm. God, was there anything in this civilization that wasn't kind of sort of geared towards human sacrifice? When you only had 20 day months, <laughs> right? You got a 20 day month and your sacrifice festival is a five day festival. So, like, one out of every four weeks is just killing and, and celebrating the killing. Yep. And then the other three weeks, you're out there trying to find people to kill. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice a palooza. (laughs) Every month. That's a real party. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously why the Aztecs have the reputation of being the biggest and baddest 
human sacrificers in human history. The, the other really big civilization in Central and South America were the Incas. You know, they covered a lot of territory. They ruled over a lot of people. They seemed to like uh, child sacrifice. That seemed to be their preferred mode. Well, they're so noisy. <laughs> Just to shut them up? You think it was... Certainly I've been in many a mall where I wish the child sacrifice was still prevalent and plentiful. <laughs> they had a stone altar in the middle of every mall? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like... Or consecrate that altar, that fountain, that penny fountain with no, that child. consecrate this gap. <laughs> <laughs> I dedicate the death of this child to the great god... Sh <laughs> god of silence. <laughs> The Incas called their practice of human sacrifice Capacocha. Hmm. They saved their sacrifices for important events. Oh, like, not just every three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like the death of uh, of their emperor or, or during a famine, like some sort of crisis. Sure. That's when they would like sort of jump into the, the sacrifice. The gods are angry with us. Exactly. We've got to do something to placate them, right? The children who were selected as sacrificial victims were supposed to be the, uh, the most physically perfect and healthy oh. because they were the best people that would present their situation to the gods. And the reason they, they preferred children was because they were the purest souls. Have you seen what comes out of children? <laughs> Especially the very young ones. It's not pure. They certainly say the darndest things. <laughs> uh, months or sometimes even years before the sacrifice pilgrimage. Although if they saved it for crisis, I don't know how they would like... Well, you know you're going to have a crisis at some point. I guess that's true. So Start you just prepping the babies. You have, you have a couple of kids set aside where you're like, these are our rainy day kids. Or, or not rainy, rainy day, day kids. Yeah. <laughs> And they would uh, they would fatten them up with diets of the elite consisting of maize and animal proteins Meat instead corn. of whatever the peasants were eating. Uh, they would dress them in fine clothing and jewelry and would escort them to Cuzco to meet the emperor where a feast would be held in their honor before they were sacrificed. What's a Cuzco? I think that's an actual place. Oh, sounds like some kind of a pillow that I <laughs> put my hands in or something. I think it actually was the capital of the Incan Empire. Okay. But, so, and then the Incan high priest would take their victims to the high mountaintops for sacrifice. So no altars on pyramids. You gotta, you gotta work for it. Go on a trek. Because the journey was extremely long and arduous, they would give the young victims coca leaves to aid them in their breathing to allow them to reach the burial sites alive. Oh, okay. Once they reached the mountain where they were going to be sacrificed, they would give them an intoxicating drink to minimize pain, fear, and resistance. <laughs> I think I know what that is. <laughs> I don't understand how coca leaves help with breathing, though. That's an interesting. No, no, the Sherpa, uh, not um, not Sherpas. That's in Tibet, but in Peru and the, all those mountainous regions in South America, mm -hmm. they they do that too. They chew so coca like leaves. A... It, uh, I guess, it relaxes your respiratory system or something like that. I don't know. I what the... saw some guy getting interviewed somewhere who mentioned that uh, he had to do that. I think he was on a TED talk or something along those lines. Yeah, I saw a documentary about a guy who, um, one of the band members of Blur, and he went to Colombia to... Get some coke. He made some statement in the press about how he'd spent a million dollars on cocaine, and so actually the president of Colombia invited him to Colombia <laughs> to show him about the <laughs> drug trade and about all the harm it did. So that maybe he could become a... Spokesperson. Spokesperson in the anti-drug campaign. And uh, yeah, they were up in the mountains and the air was getting thin and they were chewing coca leaves too. Yeah, and now it, you know. It assists with altitude sickness. Then they would give them some intoxicating drink, a little, a little uh, roofy, uh, and then kill them either by strangulation, a blow to the head, or by leaving them to lose consciousness in the extreme cold and die of exposure. Wow. So the, I don't know wow. why they mixed up the different methods. I don't know if Probably it was for the just, different crises had their own. Exactly, had their own method. Or maybe different priests. Maybe one priest was a was a head cracker and the other one was a just leave him behind on a mountaintop to like cry themselves to sleep and never wake up again. <laughs> Can you imagine just walking up there and like maybe probably tying their hands and feet and just kind of like leaving them on a rock and say bye bye and walking back down the mountain? It's all for the good of the community. Yeah, so that was the Incas. I, I wouldn't put them you know in the category of humanitarians, but they weren't ripping still palpitating hearts out of people's chests. Inca dink, you stink. Nice. Maybe that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? Another South American society that I thought was really interesting, because I didn't realize they kind of predated all these other civilizations, the Olmecs, and most of the other civilizations that sort of sprung up in the area kind of patterned themselves after a lot of their early traditions. Hmm. Although they don't have direct physical evidence that the Olmecs did uh, sacrifices, they do know that they had, or human sacrifices, they had a sacrificial bog where they would mm. throw stuff <laughs> nice. in to appease the gods, and they found children's bones. Were the bones. gods, by any chance, alligators? <laughs> 
there probably was some sort of like crocodile headed god or something like that, right? You know, who knows? But yeah, they would throw jewelry and stones and stuff in there, and they found in that sacrificial block they found oh. the bones of children. Mm-hmm. You know, whether or not they sacrificed them or those children were already dead. Oh, they were or... on a field trip that went really, really wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here, children, you see the sacrificial pit. Bobby, step back. Oh, bo- oh. oh no. We really shouldn't have tied all boat. those children together. But yeah, there was a... There's, there's we no, thought it would be safe. The bog no direct- was too strong for them. <laughs> bog vortex oh you come back it's like hey what happened to your class at the school trip because yeah oh no witnesses all the other kids are witnesses <laughs> and then i actually found a link to an article called the peruvian temple of doom which was a much smaller society in peru called the mocha or mocha mochibs yeah they have a temple where they've got carvings that show human sacrifices so they know for a fact yeah one of the there. reasons uh, i was talking to our listener dr jeb card who has a phd in mesoamerican anthropology Cool. He mentioned that one of the reasons Peru is kind of a hot topic right now is because it's so dry there compared to oh, so the other civilization that did uh, human sacrifice. Right. So lots of so everything's been preserved. I mean, it looks like people moved out of it yesterday. Like it's so well preserved. And I mean, I guess it's carved out of stone as well, which helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all the scenes of human sacrifice are portrayed in their murals and ceramics and friezes and all these other yeah. things. The uh, mocha cappuccinos. <laughs> That's uh, how they prefer to be called. <laughs> the mochachinos? Yeah. They had uh, multicolored murals in the interior patios, and the image, images represented there probably portray the decapitator. Oh, yeah? The moche deities to whom victims were sacrificed in propitiatory rites to ensure the fertility of crops, as well as the continuity of the structure of moche society. They, they gave him a good title. The decapitator. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Priests adorned in gold slit their throats one by one. A priestess caught the blood in a golden goblet for the priest to drink. Bones of sacrificial victims incorporated into murals and friezes oh, nice. show evidence of extreme torture before the grisly executions. Ooh, not nice. The thick layers of sediment in which excavators found the bones of the sacrificed victims indicate that these rites took place during heavy rains brought on by an El Nino event, which caused extensive flooding. So they not only did this, the thing is they were all really proud of it. Well, the other thing, too, is like all the super important societies in South American history all did massive human sacrifices. So if you're a much smaller society like the Mocha, you're like, well, look at all the people the Aztecs killed. And they did pretty good. Yeah. Right. You know, maybe we kill a few more people. Maybe we'll we start should. climbing the corporate food chain kind of yeah. thing. Right. Climbing the pyramid. Yeah. Ah, the gold nice. pyramid. Yeah. To heaven on the bodies of our enemies. Yeah, so, I mean, the Mayans, in 2005, a mass grave of one- and two-year-old sacrificed children were found in the Mayan region of Comalcalco. The sacrifices were apparently performed for consecration purposes when building the temples at the Comalcalco Acropolis. So, I mean, they've got, they've got some art that depicts the extraction of children's hearts during the ascension to the throne of new kings or at the beginning of the Mayan calendar. What's next? Because we'll go chronologically. You've got to start with the Egyptians, right? Was you know, there such a thing? Egyptians? <laughs> People Egyptian who, human sacrifice? I think well, there were Egyptians. I've never seen one. Because a lot of other societies, their form of human sacrifice was incorporating them into their burial rites. And right. the pharaohs mm-hmm. were big on that, about killing all their servants yep. and burying them with them. As so discussed would, in our funeral episode. I, I mean, I certainly think that that's a human sacrifice, because they yep. expect these people to show up in the afterlife with them. Right. Yep. So they, they are kind of looking for that magical effect, and these people wouldn't have died with the exception of being killed to be buried alongside them so agreed and there's some mentions even in uh, the old testament in the bible jephthah's daughter in judges 11 and we previously mentioned uh, abraham and his son isaac and the almost sacrifice mm-hmm. during our jehovah mm-hmm. episode that story now that i think about it looking at this seems to almost be we used to sacrifice people yeah. to gods now we don't anymore, and yeah, I mean, this is why. There's a lot of debate, I mean, whether or not these sacrifices that are de- denoted in the Bible ever actually happened, or whether right. they're allegory or whatever, like it's just a story to teach us something and blah, 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 right? Yeah. But, you know, I mean, they, they do depict them, so you think, okay, well then people in that era must have done that sort it's of thing. It's not a new thing. Yeah. It's exactly. not some crazy science fiction story <laughs> from yeah. their perspective. They didn't just make it up. <laughs> hey, what if people killed... Other people for gods. Yeah, I mean, let's whether, write a story about that. Let's put that in the a, Bible. Whether there was a guy named Jephthah who actually sacrificed his daughter because God gave him a victory over his enemies, the yeah. Ammonites, the Ammonites. Whether that actually, which, happened, as we all know, are prehistoric cephalopods. <laughs> 
<laughs> whether that actually happened or whether it wasn't uncommon for warlords to sacrifice family members right. as a result of winning important military victories. It's more a story about the don't make stupid vows because, well, we haven't even talked about it. So the vow is, uh, God, if you let it, let me win this upcoming battle, I will sacrifice the first thing that comes out of my house to greet me when I return home. That is definitely Thinking it's going to be his dog. Yeah. Right. You know, his dog's going to be like, oh, master's home. Or instead, his goat he, or whatever he returns else he has home, or whatever, inside. yeah. Uh, but instead, his daughter comes out to greet him, and he says, well, I told God I'd sacrifice the first thing, so here we go. The crazy part is he tells her. He's like, go, I promise God i got to take you to town. And she negotiates a two-month reprieve so that she can go hang out with her friends in the mountains. That's so random. Yeah. <laughs> the reason that he granted the reprieve was because this it, she's so young she would die a virgin, which seemed like a shame. So I think she was off getting laid. Wasn't she really, really young? Seriously, if somebody came up to you and you were 12 or 13 and said, <laughs> you will die in two months, you got two months to go hang in the mountains with your friends. I don't know, 12? I think I'd be like, ew, girl germs. Like, <laughs> Is there an instruction book? Yeah. <laughs> I just played a lot of video games. That's what I would have done. Oh, you would have done two months of Minesweeper? <laughs> if that's all I had. <laughs> I, I like the Vikings. I mean, the Vikings were. Uh, I like the Vikings too. Oh, nice. I got a hat with a horn on it. They they got they got both correct. Of those. Oh no, you don't. <laughs> oh. No, I no, do have a hat does. with a horn. Oh. That's not a Viking. But that's not a correct oh. Viking helm. But they, they would bury servants and uh, slave girls and stuff like that with them when they do those boat burials. Yeah. Again, yep. as discussed in as our discussed burial, in our, our funeral, funeral episode, they would also sacrifice, like do burning pyres and stuff like that. I got a, a quote here. Talk about one of these experiences where some a, a big king or lord or something like that had died, and so they were gonna they had to sacrifice something to speed him on his way. So the dead man's slave girls were asked who wished to die with him. One volunteered to be burned on the ship with him, and when she went to her death, the men began to strike with sticks on the shields so that her cries could not be heard, and the other slave girls would not be frightened and seek to escape. <laughs> a dagger was plunged between her ribs repeatedly, and the men strangled her with cord until she was dead. The flames grew and engulfed the pyre in the ship. Ah, ah, what's that? Uh, nothing. Fire <laughs> bonk, doesn't bonk, hurt. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Yeah. <laughs> There's a party going on over there. She's having a good time. Yeah. So ah, my ribs. Ah. <laughs> We should mention the bog people. Oh, the bog people. This is one of my favorite things that came up out of the research. When they find these, these bodies, these perfectly preserved bodies inside of bogs mm -hmm. uh, that had obviously been murdered as opposed to just like fell in there like a mastodon in the La Brea tar pits, right? <laughs> Because like, they would find nooses around their necks, and they would have broken arms, and they would have, you know, uh, caved-in skulls, and they would have knife wounds in their backs. And then they would, we would find them thousands of years later when we were... We probably want to deal with this in greater depth in our Swamp and Bog episode. Oh, Swamps and Bogs, together at last. So we'll just kind of uh, mention it in passing that they were definitely sacrificed. And stay tuned for the gory details in Swamps and Bogs. How about the uh, the Pawnee and their uh, morning star ceremony? Which was First a, off, what's a Pawnee? Pawnee is a Native American tribe. From? Along the tributaries of the Missouri. Oh, okay. So Nebraska and Kansas area. Sure. Great uh. Plains Indians. Great Plains Indians. So the morning star ceremony was the ritual sacrifice of a young girl in the spring. Uh, it had to do with their creation story in which the mating of the male morning star with the female evening star created the first human being who was a girl. Well, first of all, yeah. they had to go capture her from another tribe. So it was typically a night raid. I'm on a night raid, <laughs> ready to kill and burn. I never learn. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as a girl of suitable age was captured, the attack ceased immediately and the party returned to the Pawnee village. I love that it's called a party. Yeah. A raiding, raiding party. party. Woo, raiding party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly a panty raid. I guess it kind of is. You just get a girl inside the panties as well. It's a loincloth raid, my yeah. friend. <laughs> it was apparently only performed in the years, in the springs when Mars was the morning star. Mm. Okay. Usually originated in a dream in which the morning star appeared to some man and directed him to capture a suitable victim. Sure. Yeah. So they, mm -hmm. they would come back to the uh, the village. They would treat this girl with respect, but they would keep her isolated from the rest of the camp. And when it was spring and time for the sacrifice, they would ritually cleanse her with a and a five-day ceremony was begun. They would sing songs. Uh, was that a tobacco enema or? Yes. Okay. I don't know. That kind of a cleansing? Uh, the girl was symbolically transformed from human form to be among the celestial bodies, and she became the ritual representation of the evening star. Yeah, I like the description of the actual sacrifice procedure. 
When the morning star appeared, two men would come from the east with flaming brands and touch her lightly in the armpits and groins. My personal opinion is, if your brand is flaming, it's it not. doesn't matter whether you touch her lightly whoa, or heavily. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Geek Loth, don't hit her so hard with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's already burning, <laughs> it's dude. Like, yeah, you do not need to hit her with it touch her that lightly. hard. Touch her lightly in the armpits and groin. Oh, God. The la- Those are two last places I want to have flaming brands. What about on your eye? As four other men would come and touch her with war clubs. I'm not 100% sure whether They're that like was like magic lightly. wands, really. Yeah. Well, that was Flaming or- magic <laughs> wands in some cases. Expelliarmus. <laughs> the man who had captured her would then run forward. So you got, if you were the guy who caught her, mm-hmm. you would get the extra benefit of running forward with the bow from the skull bundle and a sacred arrow and shoot her through the heart while another man struck her on the head with the war club. So here's the thing. You got a guy standing like right to her side and then you got another guy running forward with a bow and arrow to shoot her through the heart and the dude standing right next to her. You got to be like, you better not miss. You Don't waste that <laughs> arrow. So that he can smoke her on the head with his oh, war man, club Bob at the same shot time. me again. The officiating priest would then open her breast with a flint knife and smear his face with her blood while her captor caught the falling blood on, a, on dried meat. Hmm. Then all the male members of the tribe would press forward and shoot arrows into her body. Then they circled the scaffold four times and then dispersed. The pemmican man will pass. <laughs> the pemmican man will pass. So it was a it was a pretty involved procedure. Yeah. I, my least favorite part is the touching lightly with the flaming brands <laughs> really? and the groin and armpit. If you put this as some kind of multiple choice list of things that happen in this, I would my least favorite would be the being shot and cut open. Yeah, but once you're shot in the heart, it's over. Being cut open and being clubbed on the head with a war club and all that stuff, you're over and done by them. Soon, I don't know. My least favorite part would be the putting the blood on the dried meat. That's just gross yeah uh, now they don't mention in the write-up but i wonder if they ate that meat afterwards i mean it would seem kind of in the same vein right they're just like, trying to rehydrate it and there's no water around so you got to <laughs> use the blood of the sex. yeah i'm sick and tired of dried meat let's get some blood on it well while we're talking about first nations i've got something on mound 72 do you think the natives called it mound 72 i can only assume so yeah that's how they came later became a uh, energy drink <laughs> Uh, This is from the Cahokia Mounds, uh, the area of an ancient indigenous city in Illinois, circa 600 to 1400 CE. Okay. Archaeologists found the remains of a man in his 40s who was probably an important Cahokian ruler. They also recovered more than 250 other skeletons. Scholars believe almost 62% of these were sacrificial victims based on signs of ritual execution, method of burial, and other factors. Mm -hmm. These skeletons include four young males missing their hands and skulls. Okay. A mass grave of more than 50 women around 21 years old with their bodies arranged in two layers, separated by matting. Okay. And a mass burial containing 40 men and women who appear to have been violently killed. The suggestion has been made that some of these were buried alive, quote, from the vertical position of some of the fingers, which appear to have been digging in the sand, it is apparent that not all of the victims were dead when they were interred, that some had been trying to pull themselves out of the mass of bodies. See, here's, yeah. here, if I'm going to be sacrificed by a Native American tribe, that is worse than getting <laughs> shot through the heart with an arrow. Right there. Mound 72. It reminds me of my favorite dead baby joke. What's grosser than a million dead babies piled on top of each other? A million and one dead babies? One live one on the bottom trying to eat its way to freedom. Oh, oh yeah. That only got me banned from World of Warcraft for three days. <laughs> In comparison, I would want to be one of the ones not buried alive. You would. Pussy. In the news, human sacrifices on the rise in Uganda as witch doctors admit to rituals. Oh, man. This is from January 7th, 2010. It's so about a year and a half ago. Okay. One man claimed he had clients, so this would be at a witch doctor himself, who had captured children and taken their blood and body parts to his shrine, while another confessed to killing at least 70 people, including his own son. 
The latter has now given up the ritual and is campaigning to stamp it out, according to BBC News. I've learned the error of my ways. The African country's government has claimed that human sacrifice is on the increase. The crime is directly linked to rising levels of development and prosperity and an increasing belief that witchcraft can help people get rich quickly. Do you think there's an anti-human sacrifice uh, squad or division in the uh, authorities uh, in Uganda? In Uganda, there might be. Like, if it gets widespread enough, you can have like a task force or something a like that. CSI, right? A new CSI show, CSI Uganda, <laughs> or Law and Order Special Sacrifice Division. There you go. Donk donk. During its investigation to be broadcast on Radio 4, the BBC team witnessed anti-sacrifice campaigners torching the shrine of a witch doctor in northern Uganda who agreed to give up the practice. He said his clients came to him in search of wealth. So they burned down his little altar, and then he goes, I'm going to give it up, human sacrifice. I'm going to give up the witch doctor thing. Uh, I'm cool with that. Do you actually believe that he's going to give it up, or he's just going to give it up there? He's maybe just going to move on to the next move village. Move to his second altar. Yeah, his back <laughs> precisely. Up. Like when people start like throwing stones at you and burning your shit down, you're probably like, yeah, but I can walk away from this. I'm cool. I'm cool. Uh, if push came to shove, if nobody had burned his shrine down, would he have given it up? Maybe it was like, oh, race? this would be the last day for the past like ten years, <laughs> yeah. and then if finally someone comes and burns down his altar. All right, so he's Danny Glover from the so, uh, Lethal Weapon yeah. movies. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit. This is time my to, last day. You know day. it's time to retire when the community burns down your sacrifice altar. Exactly. So in the in the uh, BBC article, they go and capture other people's children. They bring the heart and the blood directly here to take the spirits. They bring them in small tins and they place these objects under the tree from which the voices of the spirits are coming. Wow. So, so they kill the people before they come to the... So this witch doctor, this witch doctor who had his shrine burned down, is claiming that he never killed anybody. Oh. That somebody would kill them and then bring him the parts that he needed to do the spell. I didn't do mm. it. They bring, they bring me the hearts and the blood in small tins and place them under the tree from which the voices of the spirits are coming. So it's okay. The witch doctor who said he was paid 500,000 Ugandan shillings. Okay, pop quiz. How much is 500,000 Ugandan shillings in British pounds? Ooh. Pounds I'm gonna, sterling. I'm going to say... 500,000 Ugandan shillings, approximately. I'm going to say... Pounds sterling. It's like a week's worth of wages, so maybe like between two and 500? 200 uh, 500 pounds? Yeah. I'm going to say it's like 20 pounds. 160 pounds sterling for a, a <laughs> spell involving human sacrifice. <laughs> Seems like game. a bargain at twice the price. Yeah. So he was paid for his consultation and denied any direct involvement in any murder or incitement to murder. Naturally. And he said his spirits would speak directly to the clients. So That's a great way to keep your hands clean. Yeah. I don't remember anything that came out of my mouth yeah. <laughs> if it was some a dead person's voice. Uh, Moses Bonoga, the assistant police commissioner who is head of the Ugandan Anti-Human Sacrifice and Trafficking Task Force. Yeah, there it is. Called it. Total <laughs> torn called it. So wait, wait, when, when he found out about this and and heard that everything got burned down he say looks like this witch doctor's dreams have gone up in smoke <laughs> yeah <laughs> Moses Benoga said that there were 26 murders thought to be part of ritual sacrifice last year so that would be 2009 compared with three cases in 2007 so in two years it went from three to 26 that's a major uptick we also have about 120 children and adults reported missing whose fate we have not traced. From the experience of those whom we recovered, we cannot rule out that they may be victims of human sacrifice. I, when I found this article, I was surprised. That's the kind of surprise they should put him in, in the bottom of a Cracker Jack's bag. <laughs> Surprise! There's human sacrifice in Uganda! I did not know that. Or maybe like just a child's finger bone or something like that. <laughs> That's even better. Yeah, Co surprise! Collect the entire Cast your hand. own spell! Yeah, collect the entire hand. <laughs> Formerly news, and also recently news. Yeah, oh, one. I know which one you're talking about. Go ahead. Hang on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't heard about the torso in the Thames. Yeah, September 2001. Uh, so there was a boy of six years. Uh, he's a little black boy whose torso was found mutilated in the Thames. He has now apparently been identified. Like in February of 2011, a journalist wrote an article for the Daily Mail yeah. claiming that she had found out his identity. So the tragic lad has been named as Ikpamwosa from Nigeria, and a picture of him was released. That's in the news. If you're not familiar with the case, they, the detectives called him Adam, 
And he was believed to be have been smuggled to London to be butchered in a twisted West African religious ceremony. There's no way to identify him because they never found his arms or his legs or his head. He was first discovered on the afternoon of 21 September 2001 as it floated past the Tower of London. A passerby crossing the bridge noticed an orange object in the water and realizing it was a body as it passed under the bridge alerted the police. The police sent in its marine search unit to the scene who recovered the torso further downstream. The body was found to be the torso of a young black child, the orange the orange being a pair of shorts around the stumps of the legs. The police named the body Adam is the, in the absence of any positive identification, and the case became known as the Torso in the Thames. The body's head, arms, and legs had been removed with skillful precision, while his lower intestine contained a highly unusual mix of plant extracts, traces of the toxic calabar bean, and perhaps most surprisingly of all, clay particles containing flecks of pure gold. Post-mortem results reveal that he was still alive when his throat was cut. The West African poison that was found in his intestine is a paralyzing agent, not an anesthetic, so there's a real chance that Adam would have uh, been conscious while he was being murdered. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a particularly gruesome tale. Dr. Richard Hoskins, a leading expert on African religion, said the calabar bean was commonly used by African witch doctors for voodoo. It was exceptionally rare to see the bean used in Britain, but its presence in Adam's gut, along with that of the other ingredients found, convinced him this was a human sacrifice. Uh, Adam's body would have been drained of blood as an offering to whatever god his murderer believed in, said uh, Dr. Hoskins. The gold flecks in his intestines were used to make the sacrifice more appealing to that god. Nothing gods like more than gold in your gut. None they like better than poop gold. <laughs> it is a very valuable poop. <laughs> Hoskins said the most likely explanation for Adam's death is that the murderer was a trafficker of children and drugs who had sacrificed Adam in order to give him power to evade the authorities. The yeah. knife used was meticulously sharpened between each incision shows that the dismemberment of the body was all part of the ritual. Yeah. So the new news. This one thing, this one piece of evidence bridges the old news and the new news. Because there was a woman who was actually apprehended in 2001. Yeah. And they found a pair of shorts in her luggage that matched that exactly matched the pair of shorts the boy was wearing. So they thought that she was involved somehow. But it was proven that she was in Germany at the time of the murder. And DNA testing proved that she was not directly related to the boy in any way. Okay. So they released her. And so she went back to Nigeria. But then some reporter had tracked her down again. A reporter named Ronke Phillips. And apparently she's ready to talk now. And this the is... article was very sensationalistic. There were like lots of adjectives and whatnot. Yes. And there wasn't really a lot of substance. I think she was writing the article for the Daily Mail. And I don't know what the newspapers in England are like, but the Daily Mail sounds like it might be a little bit tabloidy. But the short version is that this lady, Joyce Ozia Giddy told ITV London Tonight that she was caring for the youngster and gave him to a man named Bawa who took him to London from Germany. So not related to her, but some kind of human trafficking is going on. Yeah, and, and she had pictures of her and the boy in Germany, and so that's where this reporter got the pictures of the boy and yeah. says that she's identified him. And that she, this Joyce lady, had known that there was some kind of horrible witchcraft of some kind going on with... But that's yeah, all that we really know. Yeah, I mean, even that woman, even in the interview where she seemed to be so forthcoming, admitted that she had no idea where the boy came from originally because yeah. she had gotten her him from some other woman who had been deported out of Germany. She wasn't related to him either, and she handed over to Joyce because she was being deported back to Nigeria and Joyce was still in Germany. Yeah, and then that's when she handed him over to Bawa, and then when she heard the story about the body. She kind of concluded that that's what happened to him, but she makes no bones about the fact that she wasn't there. She wasn't involved. She doesn't know any of the details. So it kind of feels like a crime that will perpetually go unsolved, sadly. Recently news, a former warlord from Liberia who called himself General Butt Naked. I think we mentioned him in the cannibalism episode, did we? Okay, he's either insane or he's hilarious. Oh, he might be both. <laughs> His given name is Joshua Milton Blayi. But he's known as General Butt Naked. He's a violent and eccentric leader working for the Liberian warlord Roosevelt Johnson. 
Okay. During the first Liberian Civil War. Yeah, that was a particularly bloody civil war. Yeah. In 2008, he confessed to taking part in human sacrifices that included the killing of a child and plucking out the heart, which was divided into pieces for them to eat. Mm -hmm. So he was into human sacrifice and cannibalism. Uh, the reason he sacrificed was at age 11, he was initiated as a tribal priest and participated in his first human sacrifice. During the course of the three-day ritual that followed, he had a vision where he was told by the devil that he would become a great warrior and that he should continue to practice human sacrifice and cannibalism to increase his power. This goes back to your statement earlier on in this whole thing about how these like high priests and whatnot back in the day were probably... Probably a little on the loopy side. Probably a little on the loopy side. This yeah. guy would have been a total witch doctor shaman for sure. Not with a name like General Bud Naked. <laughs> well, a couple thousand years ago, it probably would have been just something sort of somewhat similar, like uh, General Pantaloon or something. He would lead his <laughs> troops naked, wearing only shoes and carrying a gun. Like he actually led butt naked. He believed that his nakedness was a source of protection from bullets. And he would sacrifice a victim before each battle. Uh, usually a small child, someone whose fresh blood would satisfy the devil. Oh, so the, to the mm. devil, no less. And he explained yeah. to the Seattle Post Intelligencer, sometimes I would enter under the water where children were playing. I would dive under the water, grab one, carry him under, and break his neck. Sometimes I'd cause accidents. Sometimes I'd just slaughter them. He's a serial killer. Basically, yeah. He's a serial killer who turned into a warlord. In, and a warlock. <laughs> in 1996, when the Civil War in Liberia came to an end, he converted to Christianity. He said Jesus Christ uh, appeared to him as a blinding light and told him that he would die unless he repented of his sins. Well, that's a good reason to convert to Christianity. I want to know how the Seattle Post Intelligencer got this interview, right? Like, kind of seems out of nowhere. He's now a traveling preacher and is incredibly remorseful for all the things he's done. And he's actually expressed willingness to be tried for war crimes. I've sacrificed wow. many yeah. a baby in my time. He meets the, the relatives of his victims and feels terrible. Or so he says. I think he's just loopy. You can. I'm going to dress up like the devil and visit loopy, him. Loopy devil. You can be loopy Jesus. I have a hard time believing that if he was killing children for sport, that you can ever truly. It wasn't give for that sport. Up. It was for power. He was doing True. it because he truly believed. I mean, he went into battle naked and thought that protected him from bullets. This yeah, is a guy who was going to a swimming hole. He would go in a swimming hole and pull them underwater and break their necks. Yeah, that feels like he's adding a sport element to it. I mean, there are actual swimming involved, right? <laughs> So you're saying that this could be an Olympic level? Yeah, so this is sport as general well. butt naked so would have been the a, gold medal Olympic serial killer. So we're going to call this the diathlete. I like that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, maybe this is the time to, to do our lesser two evils. Ooh, then. let's do. All right. So what are we going to do this impaling. time? Impaling. So what are we going to do to like kind of match wits with impaling? I think we have to go for something that's not as horrible but lasts longer. So okay, that makes how about sense. taxes? Ta yeah. Would you rather pay taxes? Libertarians <laughs> yeah. do not apply. No. Uh, a weekend with my parents. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, how about the uh, method of human sacrifice of just leaving you up to die uh, on the top of a mountain? Oh, like the just, Aztecs just, did? Just, yeah. Just get chained up on the top of a hill and you die due to the okay. weather and starvation. I think, and I think that was the Incas. And right. presumably some birds and some jaguars are going to feast on yeah, you. Yeah. You, you have no hope of escape. You're chained up. Yeah. You're just going to you starve and suffer and die. But it's yeah. going to take a week or two. Maybe you've got just enough water nearby from plants to eat yeah. Well, it is out. a very moist atmosphere. Right. Yeah. There's no doubt. You're going to die. It's going to take yeah. a long time. It's going to be horrible. I seem to remember, too, in that discussion that they would take them up to a mountain because it was very cold. Oh, and okay. so that would make them miserable. Oh. And, uh, That's weird. Exposure was right. part of the uh, of the killing of process. Of course, so cold you're probably... for people who live in Central America is probably not that cold <laughs> for us so up balmy. here in Canada. Okay, granted, granted. So, okay, so a week of wasting away and perhaps being eaten by birds and jaguars. Right. Versus... Being impaled up the rectum. Rectally impaled. Rectal impalement. Uh, sliding down over an hour? How long does it take yeah, to slide? Let's say it hours. takes an hour to, to get to where you're going to die. A couple hours at most, and yeah. that's if you clench. <laughs> Man, I'm going to start working on my kegels <laughs> yeah. No time like the present when you're being impaled <laughs> I can do it while I sit here uh, Yeah, maybe you can snap off the The, the tip of the, <laughs> the tip and then just walk off <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> yeah, the goatsy guy is totally going to win He just opens right up, it goes in yeah, What? Nothing, this is nothing Snap yeah, just pulls You got the... anything a little harder? Is that all you got, Vlad? Is that all you got? Uh, who's going to start? Uh, Joe is Okay <laughs> Okay Okay, so an hour or two of just horrible up my butt, feeling 
my entire body split open, rupture uh, versus a week of wasting away. And oh. yeah, I think I'm going to choose the week of wasting away. Okay. And only because the view will be nicer. <laughs> You know, like looking at a be, bunch of other impaled people. Yeah, uh, at least I'll be up in. Uh, I'm not a huge nature fan, <laughs> but when you compare it to being around a bunch of other people being impaled in Transylvania, dark, mysterious, to horrible, compared to you know, a mountain overlooking the beautiful Central American or South American jungles, <sighs> uh, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of that's a plus. All right. Uh, I think I'm a relatively well fed dude. Okay. Sure. So. I think it's going to take me a lot longer to waste away and die okay. than your average bear. Right? Do you retain a lot of water? Yeah. You well, know, we're saying I'm, water is because you can die so quick from, from okay. dehydration. We're saying you're going to get enough water to, that, to stay alive miserably. It will you just keep on be, licking your mustache. Yeah. yeah. It will either be the biting by jaguar do or up, the... It'll do off the mustache yeah. survival trick. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah. Well, because your breath will condensate in the mustache, <laughs> yeah. right? I think that that's... One of the reasons that I shouldn't choose to be sacrificed by dying on the mountaintop because it will be an even longer agonizing process. Okay. For me. And conversely, your extra weight would make you slide down the spike a lot quicker. Yes. Yeah, so I would. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. So I should actually choose the impalement, but I'm not going to, and Ooh. I'll tell you why. Oh. Because I'm flashing that wood cutting where you we see Vlad the Impaler having a sumptuous meal. <laughs> you while, don't want to watch that. And the, the, the fact that there's a chance because that he the, he smacks his lip, he chews with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> That's torture. Because uh, if there's a chance that I'm going to have to look down on this jackass <laughs> while he's having like a steak dinner yeah. while I'm impaled on a steak. Oh, so hungry. <laughs> this makes also, it so much worse. Also, That's my right. butt hurts. Yeah. <laughs> my butt hurts real bad. Vlad, Vlad, could I have a buffalo wing before I go? That's why I'm going to choose the exposure on the mountaintop just, just because I can't stand the thought of him like really rubbing my nose in it. Now, am I naked on this altar or rock face or I think, whatever? I think I'm, on both you are, yeah. You'll yeah. be naked on both. You'll be naked in both situations. <laughs> oh, both situations? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, equalizer. Okay. Yeah. He's they not going to give you buttless chaps when he sticks the thing up <laughs> yeah. your butt. You've got to have your clothes off. He might yeah. not just be a no-pants party. Ex- <laughs> and when you're exposed to the elements, that means you are exposed tops, to the Tops, no elements. bottoms. Could yeah. be yeah. tops, no bottoms. I could have my nipp- nipples covered. <laughs> oh, is that what you're really worried about? <laughs> that's, that's I'm okay with my modesty. Is, my modesty. I'm okay with being eaten by... By jaguars as long as they don't start with the nipples <laughs> see now i usually go towards being having the chance of being eaten by wildlife right yes so i'm kind of relating to what you, you're saying about the nice view you hippie <laughs> I, could, I could watch the jaguar eat me from the bottom right <sighs> but it is a long time yeah and there's no chance of rescue no none whatsoever you're gonna die either way god <laughs> um quick you're gonna pick four three two one. Mountain, mountain, Mesoamerican sacrifice. Okay, and why? And why? Yeah, I just retreat into my. I, I mean, <laughs> I guess I could retreat into my happy place on either situation. Yeah, but I can just think of all the imaginative scenarios I could do in a week, as opposed to like three hours. Right, you could at least yeah. like I could, sing. I could plan a whole D and D campaign. During yeah, that you could time, sing right? some songs. And even <laughs> I guys would write some awesome music. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will ever hear. Yeah, write some awesome music in your head because it's not like you have a pen That's and paper. Fine. It's all for me. Okay. You'll sing it to the Jaguars. It's not for you, Kevin. <laughs> Is that a new Thicket song? The song that you sing uh, as you're chained up on a mountain about to die? That yes. should be yes. the, the song of the jungle. Get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's too high up here. I don't want to fucking die up here. Please make it stop. This scenic mountaintop. It's too high up here. I don't want to fucking die up here. Please make it stop. This scenic mountain top. I used to fear the ancient air girl would find. That was before they dragged me up here to die. It's too high up here. I don't wanna fucking die up here. Please make it stop. This scenic mountain top. It's too high up here. I don't wanna fucking die up here. Please make it stop. This scenic mountain top. Rare jewel sack.
sacrifices all well and good. But looking back, I turn it down if I could. It's too high up here. I don't wanna fucking die up here. Please make it stop. This scenic mountain top. It's too high up here. I don't wanna fucking die up here. Please make it stop. This scenic mountain top.